The Isle of Skye is considered a rather remote place in Britain, however the Isle of Rasse is even more remote. It's an island found between Skye and the Scottish mainland, and can only be accessed using a small ferry, which operates during the day. There are very few amenities on the island, but there is a hotel and a gin distillery. Today only around 160 people live on the island, and the roads reflect this, being all single track and difficult to navigate. Inhabitants have to travel across to Sky for their shopping, but found on the very northeastern tip of the Isle of Rasse is the most remote castle in Britain. Brockle Castle is a remarkable ruin, which is very easy to miss, and it's in a beautiful part of the island, being next to a natural harbour. So join us today as we look at the most remote castle in Britain, Brockle Castle, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Found on the northeastern side of the Isle of Rasse, dominating the view is Brockle Castle. It overlooks the start of Callum's Road, a road created by one man who wished to drive his car on decent terrain. The Isle of Rasse was originally owned by the McSweens before it was taken over by the MacLeod clan in 1518. Their territory consisted of a number of isles and a large part of the Isle of Skye, including land on the northwest Scottish mainland. Brockle Castle was built around the late 15th and early 16th century, and it's believed it was most likely built by Rasse's first MacLeod chief, Callum, who had been given the land by his father, the ninth chief of Lewis. At the time, this island had become a rather notorious place for pirates who operated in the area. Their work threatened the trade routes around the island, and it's believed Brockle may have been created as Callum MacLeod's main residence on the island. The castle proved the rather spectacular vantage point so that he could see out and observe the actions of pirates and help to guard the trade routes. Next to the castle is a rather beautiful natural harbour that allowed ships to be pulled up onto the shoreline and the castle provided a good base for the MacLeods to control their lands and territory. They could use it as a good base also to travel to different areas. The castle was first mentioned in 1549 and was one of two castles on the island and it was described as a strong little castle and was said to have been a fort three storeys high. The castle complex was made up of four different towers and each one was linked by a short stretch of outer wall or the rock face that it sat on itself. Access to the coastal side was controlled by a well guarded gatehouse which contained a sentry post which can still be seen today. A walkway over the gate was present too, which also offered a good vantage point, and next to this was bedrock and the curtain wall enclosing the castle. This gatehouse was at least two storeys. The castle, it's clear, was built on a rather cramped hill or mound, and this meant that some of the towers were much smaller than possibly wished. The kitchen tower was on the southwest side and also facing the sea, and it could have been used as another form of defence if anyone went to attack Brockle Castle. Standing in the inside courtyard of the castle, the tallest tower was on the northwestern side. Today there is very little that remains on the outline of the tower on the highest piece of rock. However, illustrations from the 19th century show the three-storey castle standing still proud, complete with all aspects of a castle you would expect, battlements and crenellations for defence as well as windows. The final tower on the northwest side is the tallest standing today and is the most complete, but this was used as a nursery room, which could be found on the second floor. At the bottom of this tower was a toilet built into the side of the wall. There have also been very few accounts written of Brockle Castle and about those people who lived there at the time. However, by the late 1600s, the MacLeods had moved into a more modern and spacious residence and Brockle began to fall into a state of disrepair and ruin. Over time, accounts have been written from travellers who described Brockle and what it looked like, but today it's in a rather dangerous and decaying state, and unfortunately in the near future it may not be there much longer. The castle was described in the 1700s as, situated upon a rock very near to the sea, the rock is not only one mass of stone, but a concretion of pebbles and earth, so firm that it does not appear to have been moulded. I perceive no pieces of it have fallen off. The entry was by a steep stair from the quarter next to the sea, of which only three or four steps are remaining. There is an opening in the wall on top where hot water and stones could be thrown onto an invader. Upon entering the gate or door, there was what I have never seen before, a sentry box or alcove in the wall on your right hand. The man placed there could only watch in case of noise, he could see nothing. 
The next part was the court, or close as it was called, in the centre of four towers, and open above just like any other court of an old castle in the square form. Only that this seemed extraordinary, as you came to it after ascending a stair and entering a gate. It was just an ordinary court, which was very small. Time and storms had left little but ruinous fragments, pieces of wall, pieces of stairs, and part of the battlements had fallen into the sea. There was one small room in one of the towers. It was a little triangular place with a vaulted ceiling. In the corner was a square freestone, and they call this room the nursery. Today the effects of the centuries coupled with the terrible weather and erosion have left Brockle Castle looking rather sorry for itself. Nothing remains today of the tallest tower, and little remains of the gatehouse or stairway entrance into the courtyard. In 1921, the castle was surveyed, and a sea-facing wall was still standing, but in the past 100 years this wall has collapsed and fallen. What is incredible though is the craftsmanship used to create Brockle Castle. To sculpt a castle on a small rocky outcrop was an architectural masterpiece. As mentioned it is incredibly remote, and if you do go and visit, make sure to keep an eye on the ferry times, and also make sure to take care near the ruin. It's a beautiful and unique castle, but is incredibly derelict, which makes it rather dangerous. So the stories of Brockle Castle today remain still untold, and it's clear that rather soon it may be lost to the weather and the sea. It's definitely worth a visit to take in the spectacular scenery including the harbour and small beach nearby. While stood nearby though you can imagine the former clan chiefs stood observing pirates from afar, and planning an attack if they would land nearby on the island. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.